everyone, Christina here. Welcome to day nine of the Valentine's Day card series for 2021. Today I'm using the All the Love Dies from Concord and Ninth. I'm doing all die cutting today, um, and some creative die cutting at that, and no stamping. So this is going to be one of those simple cards that has a little bit of technique to it that's really fun to create. I'm using some different colors of cardstock from Concord and Ninth. Um, I'm not entirely sure which colors those are as I'm editing this video, but I will have the exact colors listed down below in the video description in the supplies list. So if you want to know the exact colors I use, please check that out. I've just selected a few. I originally was going to use red. I eventually scrapped that idea and just used the other colors, but you'll see red on camera for a little bit. I basically went through and cut down all of the colors into little strips of different widths. I wanted some bigger ones, some smaller ones. I wanted a variety. I've done a similar technique in previous videos. In fact, it was a live video and I really loved that effect and wanted to try it out again. Cutting some white cardstock. This is actually not the final size that I'll be using on my slimline card today, but I wanted to have it be a little bit bigger than my card size so that as I get all of these strips of cardstock onto my card base or what will be my card base, I can trim it down so that the edges are perfect. So I coated the entire sheet of cardstock with stick it adhesive. Stick it adhesive is basically a very, very thin sheet of adhesive and you put it down and then you can remove the backer paper and you have edge to edge adhesive. It's perfect for this technique, especially when I'm going to be cutting it down. And you could actually use this same technique if you wanted to die cut different shapes out of the strict pattern paper that I'm making. So I started putting all of these strips down onto my white cardstock and I had them in a specific order and I wanted to keep it in that specific order. Now, as I started putting these down, um, this is when I decided to eliminate the color red. Um, it just looked a little bit too bright, um, a little too saturated. These were all more softer colors and I decided to go with that color palette. Sort of makes me think of a beach chair. Does, does anyone else get those vibes? or like ice cream sundae, I'm not entirely sure, but I thought it would be great for a love card. So after I had all of those diagonal strips adhered to my white cardstock, I turned it over and used a ruler and a craft knife to cut off the excess of those strips. And once I had one clean edge of all the strips cut off, then I could put that into my die cutting, not my die cutting machine, this is not a die cutter, this is a regular paper trimmer. I used the clean edge on my paper trimmer and I was able to get nice square edges. So I'm actually cutting this to my card size, which is nine inches wide by three and three quarters tall. It's a little bit bigger than a traditional slimline card. And that's because I've noticed that my slimline cards, while a good size, don't entirely feel a number 10 envelope. You have to get a specific slimline envelope for it to fill perfectly. So since I have a bunch of these business envelopes, I decided to make it a little bit larger so that it fills the envelope more. I created my card base out of some Nina Desert Storm environmental cardstock, just so it's a little different when you open up the card, and then adhered my diagonal strip piece of pattern paper. Not really pattern paper, DIY pattern paper, I guess you could say. So then I cut a piece of white cardstock. This is Nina uh, Classic Crest 110 pound cardstock and I cut it to eight and a half by three and one quarter. So basically a half inch smaller in each dimension than the actual card front. So here's this die from Concord and Ninth and my original plan is I wanted to have it say love going horizontally. So I'm going to do some partial die cutting. You see how that die is all fused together I'm going to put it on my cardstock as if I'm only cutting the L and the O. I'm going to tape that in place. I'm going to bring my die cutting sandwich over to my work surface and I'm actually using a smaller cutting plate. This is a small cutting plate from the Gemini Go. You can buy the plate separately and I highly recommend it for any of you who have a Gemini machine um, or even if you have um, a Sizzix machine and you want to get a smaller plate or something like that get a smaller plate because then you can put the plate um, over only the section you want to cut. 
So you'll notice that as I take this apart, I ran it through my Gemini, it only cut the L and the O. And that's because that smaller cutting plate was only over those areas. Only those areas made a complete cutting sandwich. So it works great. You can still run it through your uh, Gemini machine. It still feeds through just fine. So now I'm going to use my T-square ruler and I'm just going to extend the line of the L coming out horizontally so I can line up the V and E a little bit more easily. Um, I'm a little bit of a typographic geek like that, so I wanted to make sure that it was lined up just right. So I have the V and E in the right spot using that same easy C tape to hold it down. In fact, these are the same strips of cardstock that I used before, or same strips of tape that I used before. I'm using that Gemini Go plate once again, making sure I only have the areas that I want to cut covered by the plate. And then I just tape that in place so the plate doesn't move around. I'll run that through my Gemini machine once again, and then it cuts only the V and E. It's kind of a fun technique, um, and I've never really had to do it in this way in particular. I ended up having to use that smaller plate because of the long orientation of my white cardstock and the six inch wide limitation on my Gemini machine. So kind of a cool effect. And I'm so glad that I had that smaller plate that I could use. So I erased all the pencil lines that I put on the white cardstock earlier, and then I adhered the entire die cut panel using some tape, uh, foam tape. And I cut up little bits of foam tape to fill in those areas around the letters as well. So I'm going to peel off the release paper and then position that right over my card. And this was what I envisioned, having all of those colors behind the panel, just having them peek through. And that's why I wanted it to have love all on one line. In order to have the center of the letter O just perfect, I'm going to take the actual die cut letters. I'm going to put that right back inside. I've got adhesive on the back of that center of the O and I can puzzle piece that right back in and then use tweezers to lift out that die cut. And that makes sure that that center area is positioned perfectly. To finish off my greeting, I'm going to use a small bit of silver metallic cardstock from Lawn Fawn, and I'm using the U word die from that same die set from Concord and Ninth. I actually cut it out of that silver foil paper. Um, I cut it out once and then I used that same pale like aqua color and I cut that out three times and I stacked them and then I finished off the top of the stack with the silver foil. I thought that would be kind of fun to just have a little bit of a different uh, shadow or dimension on that die cut. So I'll hear that down onto my card and that finishes that card. I love how this turned out. I'm so glad I tried that partial die cutting technique. I think it looks really, really neat. And I actually had a lot of extra pieces from this first card. So I decided to make a second card. I first started out with my card base, which is a standard A2 size. So I scored it at five and a half for a finished size of four and a quarter by five and a half. I then took all those strips that I'd cut off when I made my DIY pattern paper and I kind of cut them in funky ways with different diagonal ends and some that didn't have a diagonal end. I wanted it to just be very random and I arranged that on the front of my card making sure to have enough area covered by the colors that I could put the love die cuts right on top. I used a Tombow Extreme Adhesive Runner just to adhere these directly onto my card front. And once I had all of these strips adhered, then I put very thin strips of foam tape on the back of the LO and VE. So I put those on, making sure to cover all those corners. And then I removed the release paper and used my tweezers to position the die cuts perfectly over that color colorful stripe area. So I'll put that down and then I'm going to position the VE right below and press that down onto my card front. So I used a bit more of that silver foil paper from Lawn Fawn to die cut the word U once again. And then I used some more 
liquid adhesive to adhere it to my card front. And the liquid adhesive that I use today is Precision Tip Glue from uh, Honeybee. So that finishes my second card for today. Both of these kind of using the same supplies, um, same colorful cardstock strips, and I love how these turned out. Kind of got two cards for one um, when I was prepping just for one card. Kind of a fun uh, turnout for all of this cardstock strips and die cutting. Thanks so much for watching today. I will be back on Wednesday with day 10 of the Valentine's Day card series. Thanks for watching.